and uh, I hope this time the audio is a little better. Uh, we're still using the headphone because uh, major research is happening on... Uh, one sec, don't we need to switch off the air conditioning? Thank you. So, like I was saying, there is major research still going on about which mic is the best. So, if you have any um, advice, any suggestions, go right ahead, tell Amit all about it. Now, last time I was talking about my journey as a cook. <clears throat> and uh, my journey as a cook came to full bloom when I met Amit. Various reasons. One is uh, I had found my home. And uh, I had found a person to share that home with, to build that home with. And the second most important reason was uh, because he was also a foodie. And both of us were, I mean, apart from all the other chemistry that was going on, there was a lot of food chemistry going on as well. And it was always, I can make this and I can make this and can you make this and how about, you know, we making this and various things like that. And uh, in our initial days, we had a kitchen that was, I think, uh, four feet by four feet. And once the counter spaces sort of took over, there was barely two feet of space to sort of do any kind of work in. But despite that, we had a lot of guests over and a lot of friends came over. And we actually churned out quite a few meals over there. And a lot of our experiments happened there as well. I remember once we actually went and bought a duck and both of us had eaten duck before but we had never cooked a duck and uh, we really didn't have uh, uh, the, the right kind of pan to cook the duck in. I had uh, my mother's old wok so we used that and uh, I don't know what we did but uh, I don't think it came out particularly well, at least the photographs don't say so, but we were both very excited that we'd cooked a duck. So. Today what I'm going to talk about is uh, the importance of a kitchen, planning a kitchen. Because uh, most of us, a lot of us live in rented apartments. Um, very few of us, you know, select few probably, especially in India, have those dream kitchens which are like, you know, 20 feet by 20 feet and have an island in the middle and pots and pans hanging from the top and glassware here and... Uh, a whole rack of uh, kitchen equipment on the other side and various things like that. So when you're living in an apartment and you're a tenant, it is very important. You, you really don't have a choice because, I mean, the amount of bad kitchens that I came across and uh, it's like the landlords don't give any importance to the kitchen space. The builders don't give any importance to the kitchen space. It's like, yeah, that's where the food is cooked, sort of, you know, get over it. But the kitchen is really the one place which sort of holds the whole home together. That's where you create magic. That's where you get your tea and coffee and your breakfast, lunch, dinner, all that happening. And even if you're a single person living, you know, on your own, it, it doesn't matter because that kitchen is going to give you so much comfort. And it's like a womb that sort of, you know, holds the whole home together, the whole house together. So... I mean, kitchens nowadays, what, what, what is wrong with kitchens mostly, the ones that I came across at least? One was there's a total lack of storage space. I mean, the, the cupboards, the shelves are just put in there without any thought as to what a woman or a man is going to store in those cupboards and those shelves. Very often what would happen is, uh, you know, there'd be these dark, dingy uh, spaces which never got filled with anything. And most of your uh, dishes or cookware would be sort of lying on the counters because there was no place to keep it. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> the other thing is, uh, you know, things like your spices, your grains, your, uh, you know, other kinds of uh, ingredients and stuff like that. Where do you keep them? And invariably, the storage sort of never took any of that into account, despite the fact that, you know, these are Indian homes in, an, in a country where people actually have bins with 10 kilos of atta and 10 kilos of rice and things like that. So nobody ever thinks of that. Then the other problem with most kitchens is the lighting. Invariably, you have this one bulb hanging from the top, you know, a 60-watt bulb, 
Now, of course, that's changed to CFL. <clears throat> or there's this one blue tube light which sort of, you know, casts this gray pall of light on everything. And uh, whatever you're cooking, no matter how good a cook you are, everything looks so, so dreary and uh, disgusting that you, you know, you feel that you're going wrong somewhere. So lighting is never correct. And most of us do our cooking in the evening because we're out at work in the daytime. Then the other problem was the air, you know, the, the air circulation. There's very rarely a window in the kitchen. If there is, it's like in, you know, tucked away in one small corner just above the kitchen sink or something like that. And it's invariably got that flight proofing uh, thing on it, which gets clogged with all the... Uh, grease and the dust and everything like that and then you have that little uh, exhaust fan on top which is always congealed with grease so it doesn't really help doesn't work unless you sort of you know get up there and clean it up and but it doesn't last for very long so these are some of the things that uh, uh, you know are a bane in the kitchen life in our country then, of course, the refrigerator. Oh, my God. The refrigerator is always outside the kitchen because there's no space in the kitchen to keep the refrigerator. So every time you want to, you know, get out that green chili or get that box of coriander out or something, your oil is burning and, you know, things are sort of, uh, you know, have reached that urgent peak over there and you're rushing to the fridge to get it out and you can't find it because it's inside somewhere. And it's, it's total chaos. So I feel it's very important, even if you're staying in a rented apartment, to take a look around at what you have been provided with and then try and make the best of it. So when actually when Amit and I bought our home, uh, I was over the moon because I was like, oh, now I'm going to have my dream kitchen. I mean, even though it was in an apartment and the space wasn't the 20 by 20 feet uh, dream kitchen space but even then it was my space and I was going to create the kitchen of my dreams over there and the first thing I did was but both Amit and I we were like really excited because both of us love you know the kitchen that's like a primary space for us so both of us got very excited and we'd been seeing all these ads on television in those days one used to watch television so we'd see all these ads with, you know, Venita Cuccini and Halfley and Bloom and uh, all sorts of people like that. And we were like, come on, we have to go and meet these people and, you know, talk to them about creating our kitchen. So we went and uh, I can't tell you how disappointing it was because uh, the people in those showrooms there, they were very keen to show us everything. And uh, the only question they asked us was, what is the shape of your, of your kitchen? Is it rectangular? Is it L-shaped? Is it square? Uh, what is the shape? So I said, okay, that's an important question. So I said, it's a rectangular shape. They said, oh, okay, so these are our designs for rectangular shape. Tuck, 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 tuck. You know, this is it. So I was like, don't you want to know about me and what I want to cook in that kitchen and how I, you know, how we sort of move around the kitchen and things like that? So this person sort of looked at us, you know, like, are you guys like, all right? I mean, this is not a dear diary, Aunt Agatha kind of uh, thing happening over here. You want a kitchen? These are the kitchens. <clears throat> this will cost you five lakhs. This will cost you six lakhs. This will cost you 20 lakhs. So you decide what you want. So Amit and I were like, okay, not happening. This is not what we were looking for. So we exited. And then I thought to myself that why can't I do this myself? So I told Amit, you take care of the rest of the house. Let me think upon the kitchen. So I spent a month introspecting. And I spent a month going through all sorts of blogs and articles on, you know, on the internet and whatever books I could find, design books, magazines, inside, outside, all those kinds of things. And uh, there were various things that these blogs asked me to do. One was, like I said, introspection. So it wanted to know, I mean, the, the article said you need to think about how much time you're spending in the kitchen, how important is that kitchen going to be in your day-to-day -day life, 
like are you a cup of coffee in the morning and a cereal for dinner kind of person or are you an involved cook or is it going to be a domestic per worker who's going to be running your kitchen what is it that how is that kitchen going to function so obviously it was going to be me cooking and not just me i had a partner who was also a cook so both samit and i were cooking and both of us had our different ways of cooking so that had to go into account and then it sort of uh, asked what is the kind of food you cook so accordingly you need to plan are you just you know putting things into the oven and taking it out is it like uh, european continental that kind of american kind of food or is this indian you know a, a more uh, spicy oily that kind of food which is you know a lot of frying involved so obviously it was frying involved but i did not want that exhaust fan i did not want a chimney you know that over the hob i didn't want any of those things because they just collect oil that's what i found so um that was question number 2 the kind of cooking that we would be doing question number 3 was of course how much time we would be spending there and uh, a lot of time obviously we cook like six meals a day we have breakfast lunch dinner then there's an 11th snack there's a 5 o'clock snack and there's uh, you know pickle making and preserve making and all sorts of things that sort of you know go on in our kitchen and in fact i have to tell you that uh, the two years of covid during the lockdown the kitchen was the one place where amit and i would congregate every evening and we would sit over there and have our drink and sort of enjoy the whole uh, sense of security that our kitchen afforded us but anyway so <clears throat> one had to decide you know figure out how much time one was spending in the kitchen so according to me at least 40 50% of our waking hours was going to be in that kitchen so that kitchen needed to be a really inviting place for us to have so aesthetics were important and amit is great on aesthetics of course so i left that part to him um we went for light and bright and things like that then the other thing that was uh needed to be taken into account was something that in hotel parlance is time and motion so how quickly do you want to get things done and how much movement do you want to sort of you know there needs to be a free flow of movement in the kitchen so it's very important to have your cooking area in a you know away from your prep area because that prep area is where probably somebody else will be coming in and sitting and chatting with you or helping you chop and cut the fridge needs to be in a place where uh, you can access it easily but at the same time somebody else who's in the house can also come and access it without disturbing you and you know help themselves to a bottle of water or a beer or whatever they want so the time and motion had to be taken into account then storage like i said storage was a very important part so i did all this introspection i did various exercises like uh, somebody suggested the cardboard box test now what is the cardboard box test you take all your cutlery everything that's there in that drawer uh, your spatulas your knives your spoons forks the works and you dump it in that box then you and you leave everything in that box for a period of a month I did it for a period of 3 months because I wanted to be absolutely sure. So, and every time you need something to cook with or to eat with or to chop with, you took it out of that box and if it came out of that box, it stayed out. So, by the end of that month or 2 months, you knew that okay, these are the things that I use regularly and the rest of the stuff I can dispose of. I don't need um of course that i don't need when i looked at the i don't need there was so much stuff in there that uh, we had to sort of like i said i had to leave it in there for 3 months to make sure that you know i was not uh, throwing things away that i would need later on sadly our potato masher got disposed of and uh, amit still talks about it it's been 10 years now that it's been disposed of but amit still sort of mourns over the fact that our potato masher is gone so i shall be buying him a new one for his next birthday 
But uh, so that was a very interesting exercise. And that's an exercise I've actually done with my wardrobe as well. Um, I've tried doing it with my books, but uh, every time I created a pile to throw, it sort of went back into the bookshelf. So that was total no-no. But uh, uh, so the cardboard test was one thing which was very important. Then we do something uh, like Amit and I are both majorly into vegetarian food, believe it or not. So dal is quite an important, uh, you know, grain in our home, lentil in our home. So, uh, and storing the lentils is a big problem because you put them in these, uh, you know, round uh, boxes or whatever it is. And then uh, invariably they sort of, you know, start getting weevils and stuff like that. And then you, you know, they, they take up too much space. So I was looking at the water bottle. And I said, why don't I store my dal in the water bottle? You know, in the hotels, they sort of put these lentils in and make these colorful kind of things or whatever. So I said, you know, I'll follow that example and I'll put, uh, you know, so like we have 16, 17 odd dals in the house. So there are these water bottles with dal in them. And because it's got a narrow opening, um, I found that they didn't, they, they stayed uh, fresh and weevil less for a really long time. In fact, I haven't had problems with any of them except for the chana dal, which uh, always gets, uh, you know, goes bad. But uh, so that was a nice way of, you know, storing my dal. And since I was doing that, um, so I sort of actually sat down with pen and paper and uh, measuring tape and I, the builder had already created these uh, countertops these granite ones so there was nothing one could do about that unless one wanted to get into major breaking and uh, you know sort of destroying things but uh, neither Amit nor I wanted to get into that in any part of the house so we were like we shall work with whatever we have available. The other thing that I didn't want to do and this is something I'd learned from experience um, from my parents actually <clears throat> my mother had 40, 50 years worth of things. And most of those things used to be, you know, stored away in lofts and various places. And they never got used. So after she passed, I mean, there were just, you know, mountains of various kinds of crockery and cutlery and date cheese and walks and all sorts of things, brand new, some of them, which had not just, just not been used. And so I told Amit that I don't want any space, any storage space, which is not accessible on a day-to-day -day basis. So I don't want any lofts and I don't want any hidden corners anywhere. If there's a corner, let it be. I'll put a plant over there or, you know, I'll stand something over there, but I'm not going to create any of those corner kind of uh, counters or, you know, shelves which sort of open up weirdly and, you know, they just make a nice nest for rats or whatever. So <clears throat> that was a very important thing that I did. And I also decided that since both Amit and I are tall people and uh, we have back problems, so bending down and opening a cupboard below waist level is a big pain in the ass. So I said, let's have just drawers, you know, we create drawers. So Amit actually got in the carpenter and said that can we create drawers, big drawers, which will take the load of, say, 20 kilos of grains. So the carpenter took it on as a challenge and he was like, yes, certainly. And then we went and, you know, Amit and I used to actually go to all these uh, shops, these outlets. And, you know, right from the tiniest little nut bolt to uh, uh, the sheets of formica, whatever it is that went on top. Uh, Amit's a better judge of the uh, person to talk about that. But uh, we selected each and everything and the carpenter was totally with us and he was very excited because I don't think he'd ever created a kitchen like this. And after he did it, he was like, uh, do you mind if I take photographs and show it to my other customers so that, you know, they can uh, also, you know, employ my services because I've really learned a lot from you guys. So like when you walk into my kitchen, and someday maybe I'll show you a video. The first uh, drawers on one side, on as you enter, 
is the top drawer. The, there are these shallow drawers on top and the bottom drawers are the deep drawers. So you have the napkins and then you have the glassware and then below that is one drawer for all the plastic. So because uh, I'm a great plastic uh, believer or used to be now, I'm slowly moving on to glass and various other things very sad but uh, yeah in those days you know you had you got these lovely little plastic uh, you know containers and things like that in which you put away things in the refrigerator so <clears throat> that bottom drawer is all for plastic and then I decided okay so this is uh, next comes the chai coffee corner so everything related to chai coffee whether it was uh, we don't drink milk we use uh, dairy whiteners so whether it was the dairy whitener, the sugar, the tea, the coffee. And for tea, uh, Amit has like five different teas that he drinks. So there was the regular tea and then my Darjeeling tea and then Amit's green tea and then, uh, I don't know, all sorts of herb teas and things like that. So there was one cupboard which had all the teas and coffee and things. He's an instant coffee guy. I'm a brewed coffee guy. I like my coffee dark and strong so we had the tea coffee space and then we had we had to figure out okay the countertops wasn't that much space so we had to figure out that uh, you know we need a one drawer where we can put away the toaster and we can put away the mixie should we need to be cooking you know uh, dishes that need a lot of mise au plat work and for like for parties and stuff like that and then my cooking now, this was a huge argument that Amit and I had, and we actually stopped talking to each other for, I think, a period of uh, one week. And uh, I, wanted the, I wanted to buy a range, and I wanted to keep it where the, what, was, what in Bombay is called the drying area. So I wanted to keep the cooking range there because it's got these huge French window type things. And you just open out the windows and all your oil fumes and everything sort of goes out of the house and there's nothing happening inside. So <clears throat> I wanted it there and Amit was like, no, um, I don't think a range is a good idea and we're not going to have it over there and uh, that's the drying area, it'll be the drying area and things like that. Till finally the Vastu guy came in and uh, I do believe in Vastu and Feng Shui and all that because not for any other reason, but it just makes a lot of sense, north, south, east, west, magnetic, pull all that stuff it does make sense so the vastu guy came in and he said yep east is where you need to cook and north no way no cooking so i won that round and uh, so that's where my cooking went totally out of the way so the rest of my main kitchen became the uh, miso plat the workspace the <clears throat> adda space you know where we sort of just sit around and drink our tea coffee and chat about what's going to happen for the day and uh, so that was one of the most uh, uh, innovative things because right next to my range is uh, one set of uh, shelving units, again drawers, which uh, the top one is the shallow drawer, which has all my masalas and everything in it in bottles. So I, I don't like that round tin thing because I find the jeera starts smelling like the dhania and the haldi starts, you know, everything gets muddled up over there. So <clears throat> in order to keep them in their bottles and things like that, I have this drawer in which all my masalas go. And the drawer below that is various things like oils and all that. And the drawer below that are the big cooking dishes. On the other side are the other cooking dishes. The chatti is lying over there in one of those. And of course, the uh, you know thing with the hooks for the spatulas and stuff like that. So that was totally the cooking area. And inside was the pantry and the dishwashing and, uh, you know, that, that sort of area. And of course, there is no storage room, no pantry kind of thing in an apartment because that real estate is too high. So I created, we had these two huge drawers in which the top drawer took in things like, you know, packets of stuff because we sort of buy things one month in advance before things sort of finish off. So things like the noodles and the pastas and, uh, you know, garam masalas and various things like that went into that big drawer. 
and the drawer below that was, uh, you know, things like sugar and salt and all that kind of stuff. And then there was that other big drawer with, <clears throat> which took in appliances, which took in other kinds of uh, cooking equipment. My mandolin sits there. Then, <clears throat> um, you know, the, the egg trays and things like that, large uh, strainers and various things like that. They sort of live over there. And uh, even though for the first uh, two years, three years, I actually had a domestic worker who uh, was helping us out because uh, we needed somebody full-time in the house to take care of the dogs, since Samit and I were out quite a lot. So he used to cook as well. He would make the rotis and the rice and things like that. Um, even he found it so convenient. And the beauty of having sort of, you know, thought it out and planned it out and worked it out. We haven't changed a single thing in the kitchen in the last 12 years that we've been in this house. The rest of the house keeps getting makeovers and, you know, drawers keep changing and the furniture keeps getting pushed around here, there and everywhere according to need. But uh, the kitchen is one place where we haven't felt the need to actually change anything. Um, the carpenter sort of, you know, did insist that, Madam, you've got this space on top and uh, it's, you know, it's a waste. So let me make at least two, you know, of these loft cupboards over there. Um, I'm sure you'll sort of appreciate it. So I was like, okay, fine, make those loft cupboards. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. So he made the loft cupboards and uh, what sits there now is, uh, I think, an old icebox and uh, my doggies bowls both the dogs have gone so their bowls are there we can't bear to throw them out and then there's a small little gas uh, burner cooker kind of thing with a cylinder which we used to have in the old days when uh, you know for just in case the cylinder finished and you know before the next cylinder came you had something to use and uh, that was basically the whole thing and uh, so when you walk into my kitchen, it sort of, you know, anybody who walks in there, they don't need to be familiar with my kitchen to know where everything is. Those drawers slide open very easily. And you know that, okay, the steel dishes are here, the flatware is here, and uh, the katoris are in another drawer. And, uh, you know, the dals are these lovely pullouts, these slim pullouts. So the minute you pull it out, you get to see all 16 bottles of the dals. And uh, I've also extended it now to a few vadis and things like poha and suji and all that. And uh, so that was, you know, the whole plan that one sort of came out with, with my measuring tape and everything. I knew exactly what shape and size I wanted each drawer to be. Then the refrigerator. Since Amit and I both cook, and uh, but we eat not as much as we cook, so <laughs> there's always a lot of leftovers. So one thing that we did need to invest in was a big fridge. So we got ourselves one of these double door things because I was like, if it's going to be a big fridge, then um, can we sort of, you know, can I have one of those double door things, please? So because I wanted to not just, I don't just freeze my meats and fish and things like that, but uh, I also store a lot of my um, spice in the freezer, you know, things that you use rarely and things that might go bad. So, or, you know, get kiras, get weevils very fast. So those all go into the freezer as well. So you really will never find ice cream or uh, even ice cubes in my freezer part of the fridge. You'll find packets of papar and uh, packets of uh, vari, amritsari vari and bottles and bottles of all kinds of different different spice and things like that and uh, the suji and the poha and the maida and the basin these are the four things that go into the freeze, freezer as well because we don't really use them on a daily basis but uh, it's a good thing to have in the house if you're feeling snacky and can't think of what to eat so those are you know things that sort of stand on the door of the freezer and uh, of course things that we pick up on our various travels around the world because wherever we go we're only food shopping so things like sambar powder and rasam powder and uh, wasabi and all sorts of things and 
uh, when friends come visiting, they're also getting us only food things. So like Sureka, my friend who lives in Germany, every time she comes, she's like loaded with things like all sorts of dried herbs and various things like that and uh, stock powders and various things. So all that goes into the freezer because there's, you know, that much that two people can eat. And earlier when we were entertaining, of course, a lot of it got used up. But uh, ever since this COVID thing took on and we've sort of stopped entertaining for a while, it's, I mean, our freezer has really helped out so much so that we actually went out and we bought a freezer freezer because during the early days of COVID, we were like, you know, we don't know how long deliveries are going to last and happen. So we got ourselves a lot of meats and fish and things like that, and we put it into that freezer deep and freezer. a deep freezer, yeah. And uh, that's what we were using. So it, I think it's really important that you sort of introspect and think about your kitchen, because that is the one place that uh, everybody is uh, going to enjoy. I mean, every person in the home has some relationship with the kitchen. I mean, wives, of course, in a regular, normal Indian household, the wife is the one who's in charge. But if your husband is a cook as well, or, you know, likes to make himself a cup of tea, or even that Maggie noodles or whatever, then he should, you know, enjoy going into that kitchen and should invite him in. It should be a place where children feel excited to go in and, uh, you know, create things as well, because that sort of sets them on the path of wanting to cook for themselves. So that that kitchen has to sort of, you know, pull you in. And uh, the aesthetics, um, while one can't go overboard with aesthetics, because obviously you can't have chandeliers and things like that happening in the kitchen. Though at one point, uh, one of the rented homes, the kitchen was so dark that, and there was, you know, just one bulb uh, fixture given that I actually had table lamps in that kitchen to sort of light things up. You don't need a brightly lit kitchen like that, but you need light and, you know, spaces where you're working. And you certainly need a bright light where you're cooking because you want to see what you're cooking and what's going in. And, you know, whether it's done or not done, the visual uh, uh, treatment is as important as, you know, everything else. So the kitchen needs to be a place where everybody feels at home. And uh, even though I wanted an island in my kitchen and there was no way we were going to get an island in that kitchen, uh, Amit came up with this brilliant suggestion. So we had this old dining table and uh, he chopped it into uh, one third and he created this small little table, which is the one that you see uh, in most of our episodes where we showcase the food. And uh, so he cut that table into half, literally, he sort of took it out, took out the middle portion and, you know, had the carpenter put the two together. And he got this beautiful piece of marble. And that is my kitchen island. So it's a movable island. And uh, we've had a lot of breakfasts over there. We've had a lot of meals as well over there. And when friends come in, there is always a chair or a table. And Sarah, if you're watching, Sarah Shelton, there is a chair in my kitchen for you waiting and lots and lots of coffee, so do come. Uh, so, <clears throat> so, you know, our kitchen has been one of, I feel, one of my uh, most uh, major uh, accomplishments, if I can say so. And it's been such a joy that uh, it really doesn't, it's not a, not a chore to work there. Uh, when my window opens out, I'm looking out at the poolside and there are children playing and the birds and the crows and even the crows sort of come and visit and they sort of sit over there and go, Ka! and like, what are you cooking? And there's one particular crow who every time I'm making that potato mix for the dosa, you know, what you fill inside, he wants that. I think he was a South Indian in his last birth or whatever and he just loves that potato. So you have different birds coming in and you know, you, you sort of get some fresh air. And Amit was worried that the sun, because it faces east, so he was very worried that the morning sun would, you know, be too harsh. So he got that covered with some, the glass panes covered with some special paper, I don't know what, which sort of deflects the light and uh, yet allows enough 
uh, deflects the heat and allows the light to come in. So that was done as well. And uh, like I said, my kitchen is a joy. And uh, I hope if you've been watching this, then you know, you've picked up some pointers as well and will certainly, you know, stand in your kitchen and look around and see if, you know, there's anything you want to change and how to change it and, you know, how to improve it and what to do to make it a special place if it isn't already one. And uh, so in case you have any questions or would like, you know, to toss some ideas around, I'm open. Any questions? No questions? No. Okay, wonderful. So, thank you for watching and thank you for being here. I hope the audio was better this time. And uh, like I said, we are coming up with episodes, recipes almost every day now. And uh, the next vegetarian recipe is going to be really special. It's uh, something uh, that, uh, you know, somebody has suggested for us. So... See you then and uh, have a good Sunday.